Hi there, my name is Dr. Andrew Burnett Thompson. I'm the creator and the owner of SciChart. SciChart is a high performance WPF and Silverlight charting component. We're just about to release a new version of SciChart, which is version 1.5, so I wanted to give you a quick rundown of the new features. You can find all this information and more at our website, which is www.scichart.com. So first up, what is SciChart? Well, if you're a WPF or Silverlight developer, you'll know a lot of components for charting can be fairly slow. SciChart aims to bring real-time rendering of extremely large datasets to these platforms by mixing vector and bitmap graphics. It's a technique that we've pioneered and it's yielding some fantastic results in terms of performance. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the demos. So first of all, you can find the demos on our website by clicking on Demo and here we have demonstration app and uh, this is a Silverlight demo which runs in your browser or you can download a 30-day trial. I'm going to run these demos locally I've got the WPF version running here on my computer. So a quick overview of the new features we've we've got a new feature a new series type called a band series this basically renders two lines with a shaded band between them and the shaded band changes color depending on which line is above the other We've also added examples for what we call an impulse chart. This is basically a vertical line with a point marker at the tip. The line color is configurable as is the optional marker at the tip, the shape and size and color of it. We've introduced a new control called size stock chart. This basically wraps up all of the logic to create real-time stock charts into one control. So you can now declare this in your XAML with only a few lines of code. So the size stock chart by default has got enabled zooming and panning and a cursor and you can switch between whether you want to do a rubber band zoom or a pan. The zooming is animated as you can see this is based on the base side chart surface class so it's reusing all the same components. We've got a new example for real-time ticking stock charts. This is because a lot of our users were using SciChart in trading applications and they liked what they saw, but it wasn't quite up to scratch for use in real-time systems. So we've really, really gone a long way to improve this. Some of the issues that were in version 1.3, such as dragging and scrolling and panning was very, very glitchy with stock charts. This has been completely resolved with this new version. The overview control, which lets you scroll and pan and zoom has also been rewritten and works a lot lot better than it used to work. We've got animated zoom and real-time ability so on this on this example I'm just going to click on start real-time and you can see the chart ticking away there. Once it's ticking you can basically zoom it and pan it absolutely no problem and in this example we demonstrate how you can change the series type In addition, we demonstrate how you can change the theme. And turn anti-aliasing on and off. Some people prefer that. It gives a lot crisper view for the lines. So that's our real-time stock charts. And um, I must stress, these have been very, very thoroughly road tested. We've been working alongside a customer who has integrated these to a trading platform. Um, with literally thousands of customers worldwide so um, this is something that is really really going to get used and if you decide to use it you can rest assured it's going to be supported. Another new example is this one here which is the overview control. Now the overview was built in SciChart 1.3 um, but it had quite a lot of problems you know it didn't really work so well and we intended it to work just with stock charts and people have come to us and said look can you make the overview work with numeric axis charts because we really want to use this in scientific examples. So the way that this works is the overview control binds to a parent side chart surface and when you move one the other moves. It's as simple as that. The overview also has animated scrolling so when you click outside of this reticule it'll animate to the new position and you can resize like this. Another feature that we've added and this is a major feature is annotations. 
In SciChart version 1.3, you could annotate the chart by drawing some UI elements manually over the top of it. That really wasn't enough for a lot of these complex um, applications that people wanted to do. So what we've done is we've created a whole suite of annotations which are built in and fully supported. We've got text annotations, lines, arrow lines, boxes, horizontal line, vertical line, and these which are called custom markers. So the annotations here are all static, however you can uh, respond to events. There we go. In another example we've got dynamic annotations. Let's have a quick look at this one. So these annotations have all been created programmatically, however they're now editable. So they can basically be resized or repositioned as you wish. and another example which shows you how you can actually get the user to create annotations dynamically. So in this example we can create trend lines, we can create arrows, we can create text, horizontal lines, vertical lines, axis markers, these are really useful for showing the latest value of a series, a custom annotation which can have anything as its child, in this case we've had an image, and finally a box annotation. Another feature that we've added in SciChart version 1.5 is the ability to individually color bars based on a threshold or a value. So in this example what we do is we demonstrate how by moving a horizontal line annotation as a threshold we can basically respond to a callback and color these bars. They don't have to be red, they can be any color, you could have rainbows here or different colors for every bar. So if you wanted to highlight some data as selected or important, um, using this method would, would be the way to do it. This has been tested with columns, open, high, low, close and candlestick charts and the bar coloring we're going to introduce to line charts and mountain charts pretty soon. Another example that we've rewritten is this trademarkers example. So in SciChart version 1.5 the code was very very verbose to create these markers and now we're using the new annotations API. There's literally about a page of code and that's it. So the buy and sell markers are overlaid on the chart. These are generated at random and they also data bind to a tooltip. In addition to that at the footer of the chart we've got these news bullets which you can use to display um, corporate information such as dividends, stock splits, etc. etc. There's an animated zoom enabled on this type of chart and as you see that everything moves pretty smoothly as you zoom in. In SciChart version 1.5 we've really really worked to optimize performance. Performance is so important to us. We, we want to deliver the fastest WPF and Silverlight chart and our users are demanding more and more every day so it's really driven by what they want. This is our performance demo and uh, it runs pretty pretty quickly. Now do bear in mind I'm recording the screen at the moment so it slows it down a little bit um, but it'll quickly run into the millions and millions of points and it's still running at interactive frame rates. If you pause this you can now zoom into the chart and we get a very nice smooth animated zoom and we can zoom all the way out. And this is all occurring pretty much very interactive frame rates and straight away. So yeah that's that's pretty much it for SciChart version 1.5. This is going to be going out the door um, in the next next couple of days. Um, it's in beta right now. Um, we've responded to and resolved about 30 um, support requests, bugs and issues um, since going to beta a couple of weeks ago and we're pretty much ready to launch now. So I invite you to go to our website um, which again is www.scichart.com and go onto the demo page and you can look at the demo or download a 30-day trial. In addition to this if you want to find out a little bit more information we've got two white papers here which we've created one for stock charts and one for scientific charts. These have got a bit more information about the two different types of application that we're serving here. Finally, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. You can do this via the website 
or go onto the community and support page and post on our forums. Thank you very much for your time.